From shopkeepers to warehouse workers, lifting boxes is an integral part of a variety of jobs in our workforce. Many individuals experience difficulty when lifting boxes due to carpal tunnel syndrome, arthritis, or repetitive strain injury. Lori Barron, our school's bookstore manager, expressed her personal challenge with moving boxes on a daily basis. Lori has been diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome and arthritis. Therefore, she is no longer able to lift boxes. Okay, I have pain in my thumb. My wrists are taking a beating because it's it's not going any higher. My well, my arms are, you know, of course, holding them up, but your hands tend to take the brunt of the weight. After spending time with Miss Barron, the team realized that along with moving boxes, Lori also uses the computer, files papers, and writes throughout the day. So any mechanism to assist Lori must not impede with her other tasks. The team learned that carpal tunnel syndrome is associated primarily with the median nerve as it passes through a narrow opening referred to as the carpal tunnel. Injuries, arthritis, and strain to tendons caused by repetitive motion can clog the tunnel, causing pressure on the nerve generating numbness, pain, and restricted movement. Lori also has osteoarthritis, one of over 100 types of arthritis. Osteoarthritis is caused by the gradual wearing down of the cartilage in the joint, leading bone to rub against bone, resulting in pain, swelling, stiffness, and limited movement. According to the CDC, about 50 million adults in the United States have been diagnosed with a form of arthritis. Both of these conditions make lifting boxes difficult. We then researched existing technologies. Weight belts and back straps are used to minimize pain to the back. Gloves are available to apply pressure on joints in order to minimize pain due to arthritis. A product dubbed the LiftMate allows users to lift boxes by solely pressing down on the device, but it does not alleviate any strain placed on the user. The team then found patent 5987641, which detailed a wrist guard that stabilizes the user's wrist, thus alleviating pain due to carpal tunnel. We liked the stability which a wrist guard offered, but the device did not transfer the weight of an object away from the hand. The team used the ideas behind existing technologies to develop Prototype 1, which combined a wrist guard with a VersaGrip, used by weightlifters to prevent wrist injury. Although the wrist guard stabilized Lori's wrist, it inhibited her ability to lift due to its bulkiness. We went back to the drawing board and decided to use a smaller Futuro glove with the VersaGrip attached at the end. When given to Lori, she enjoyed its smaller size and its ability to help her while lifting, but she disliked how the rubber grip flapped around and inhibited her ability to perform other tasks. Using this feedback, the team developed Prototype 3, which added a Velcro fastener that permitted the rubber grip to be folded away, and an elastic strap to secure the rubber grip to the fingers. This allowed the grip to be unobtrusive when not in use. After hearing Lori's opinion, the team sought out the medical expertise of Dr. John Grossman, a hand surgeon, and from Rachel White, an occupational therapist. Although they liked the ergonomic design of the glove, the main concern was that a user with carpal tunnel needed more wrist stability than Prototype 3 provided. They suggested that we add pockets to the glove for removable splints to provide extra wrist stabilization, if desired by the user. They also remarked on other features of the hold. What's also nice is that it keeps your fingers together, so when you spread them apart, even though that creates more surface area, it's a lot more stabilizing because then they can put more weight on the index or on the pinky and create strain there, so that's really nice. We liked the idea of allowing users to insert different splints and stays, so we decided to develop this concept into our final prototype. Our engineering team has developed the hand-operated lifting device, the HOLD, an ergonomic glove designed to stabilize the wrist while transferring weight from the user's fingers to their forearm. The final hold was constructed by using CAD models to determine the measurements of the neoprene fabric which would be sewn. By overlapping the neoprene, pockets were made for removable metal stays which stabilized the wrist. A velcro strap was then sewn into the bottom of the glove to secure the hold to the user's wrist. A rubberized material was cut and used as the rubber grip to transfer weight from the fingers to the forearm. An elastic strap was then sewn to the end of the rubber grip to secure it to the user's fingers, and Velcro was added to the end of the grip to allow it to fold in. The team wanted to conduct more testing, and we were able to contact Goya Warehouse in Miami. According to their warehouse manager, each employee lifts around 400 20 to 30 pound packages on a nightly basis, which has led some employees to develop pain in their wrists and fingers. After testing the hold with employees, we were told that it does not interfere with the ability to hold papers, write, tape, or move trolleys. 
The warehouse manager informed us that he found the hold extremely helpful and would be willing to consider purchasing the device for employees. Just like the brace, you know, at the beginning you don't want to use it, but then you realize that, that it helps you. And this, this is something that will help. We estimate that the final hold will have a production cost of $5 to $7, with the neoprene and rubber grip accounting for the majority of the expenses. However, the final approval of the hold came from Lori herself. He took away a lot of strain on my hand, and I didn't feel the normal pain I get in my wrist from lifting, you know, the books. I can tell you for sure when I'm at my busiest with the boxes, the books, which is the summer, I will <laughs> always have them on.